Hello everyone, welcome back to the shop. Today is going to be part two of the power hammer tooling for the Da Vinci Cam Hammer and the Hardy Hammer. Hope you enjoy. Okie doke. So, we are here at the workbench again. Um, I'm going to take and go over briefly what we're going to be doing. I'll add a few shots of me working on this. Uh, but I won't bore you with the entire video. This is actually a pretty simple process. Um, so what I got here is a piece of uh, three-quarter inch by one inch uh, steel bar. Uh, I just doing this simply, it would have worked out better if I would have had a one inch by one inch square bar instead. But what you're going to do with it is, is cut it off the width of the die. And so both dies are roughly around two inches. The Hardy Hammer's two inches and the... Uh, da Vinci cam hammer, since it uses a sledgehammer, it's about two and a half inches. So just something to keep in mind there. You want this width to match the width of your dies. All you're going to do is, is drill a quarter inch hole in it, or one size larger than the shaft of your spring tool here, or your handle. You just want it to be one drill bit size larger. So this way, it's got some space in there. The reason why is what we're going to do is now that we've got this drilled in here, we are actually going to cut this or divide this in half. Now this does two things for us, and it has a purpose, I promise you. One thing it does is it gives us two halves, which allows us to have two different separate tools that you can shape a little differently. The second thing that it does for us is if you were to weld this in here like so or just weld it onto the outside of this 10 to 1's odds it will break right here at this connection um, just behind the weld or right there it will shear it off and it's just not as strong of a joint so what we're going to do is we're going to cut this in half and then that will allow I've already prepped a round radius. We're going to cut it in half like this one here. And what that will leave us with is a track then that we can set that in and we can weld it in solid and then grind it off clean. So it gives us on this particular one, this is going to become a top tool for like a fullering die. Um, this is also another way of making a, a flatter to where if you flip it the other way, you can use it to flatten out the stock, um, you know, take out the chop marks from power hammer work or from the dies themselves. So, but that will allow us to get a good amount of weld up both sides and leave this end here without it weakening it by welding right in this area. Um, the only way that you can keep from making this a weak joint in this area is by building up weld and that just makes it a mess. So this is the easiest way that I have found to do that. And hopefully this is in shot. Looks like it is. Okay. Um, and uh, trust me, try it the other way once um, and see how it works for you. You may not have any problems with it, but any power hammer tooling that I've ever done where I've just welded a, you know, a rod to the end of it there they always snap off after a period of time. You gotta grind them down and re-weld them on. This here is much more effective uh, of making a weld on here and stopping it from snapping off. That's just a personal preference for me. So we're gonna be making a round fuller tool slash flatter. We're gonna be making a square set down tool or roughly a rectangular set down tool. And then we're going to be taking this little tool here, which just happens to be 5 8 square stock by the whip of my power hammer dies. And we're actually going to cut it on the diagonal to create. Um, I'm not sure what you would call it. Um, I call it a butcher tool myself. Um, it's not really to take and cut material off, per se, but it's to help um, separate stock. 
And I'll go over that a little more in detail when we actually go to making tongs on the power hammer. And you'll get to see how, what I mean by, you know, it dividing up the stock um, to, for like where the boss area will be and the jaw area. But we'll go into more detail on that in a later video. So without further ado, I'll get some shots of me working real quick. Um, and then, uh, you know, I'll come back to you when I get them done so you can kind of see what the finished product, product is. Essentially, we're going to cut up, you drill your pieces out like so, cut them in half, and then weld on your rods just like so in there. And then that would give you your desired tools. So we'll just go ahead and do a bit of a kind of a not really a slideshow presentation, more like a slideshow with video clips um, of just the different processes in action so you can get the gist there and then uh, I'll get back to you when it's done. Okay guys, so as you can see here I got these cut in half. This one here wasn't quite in the middle, drilled out in the middle, but I made this groove here um, that this can sit in, this little piece here can sit in, as you can see, nice and comfy, just like so. Uh, so next thing I'll do is I'll go ahead and lay a bead of weld along the top here, along the other side as well, and then grind that off nice and smooth on top. Uh, you may be asking yourself at this point, okay, you know, why don't you just lay this on top of a piece of stock that is already 3 8 by 1 and then just weld it on top. Uh, same reason as mentioned before, any piece that's just stuck on to another piece with weld, you're relying on, you know, maybe a sixteenth of an inch of penetration um, from the weld into the actual material if a sixteenth of an inch of penetration. A lot of times it's less than that um, and under the power hammer it just won't take it. So if you did it on top here you're barely getting any penetration on the top side of this plus you're leaving this weird it, it just leaves the whole piece very unbalanced. As where when you put it in like this it makes the whole piece balanced and it's in line. I'll try to turn that around to where you guys can hopefully see it here. All right, let's see here. Maybe something like this. It keeps it more in line, in other words. If you just welded this right on top, it would feel more unbalanced. So when it's down more further into the core, it feels a lot better. Plus, say that rod was welded on top. What are you gonna do once the hammer dies, beat this flush with the rest of the weld? It's gonna get paper thin and eventually just break right off. So having it like that is a much better option. It will give the tool a lot more longevity. Um, and, you know, this is cheap. This is, does not take a whole lot to make another one of these uh, in, in short order. So I'll move on to the clip of me welding this up, you know, just for kicks and giggles. And then we'll be back to go ahead and um, I'll show you all the finished projects, product of it. And I'll go over just a few key tips and then we'll leave you there.
Okie doke, ladies and gents. This is what it is. So, as you can see, I got them all welded up here. Make sure I'm in the shot. Yep, you can see. Okay. Um, essentially, I ran two passes. I ran a bead down the left, or down the right, and down the left side of the rod itself not on the rod directly. Once again, we want to keep that full thickness of the rod. We just want to be able to join it to here. Um, I actually didn't sand these smooth or flat. Um, I don't think it'll much matter. Uh, the, uh, the MIG wire that I was using is a mild steel MIG wire um, for a welder. Uh, so I don't think I'll have any sort of worry about that. Um, but as you can see, those give me my radius tools to be able to use. Yeah, you can see that, I think. There we are. Anyways, um, so as you can see, it gives you your tools that you can set on your material and work out your stock. I'll grab a piece here. So you can set on your material and the power hammer comes down and strike it and you can use it as a top tooling like a fuller. You can use that right there. Um, I'm not, like I said, I'm not sure what they call this. I just call it a marking tool or a layout tool to mark off shoulders where you want your shoulders to end up being um, to divide up the material. And then a flatter or a set tool to be able to set down material. Um, these are kind of critical if you're going to make tongs on a power hammer. Um, you, you, you have to have these tools here or bottom or a bottom tool. Um, that fits the actual hammer itself. Um, but most of the time when guys make tools, they have these top tools. Um, the other great thing that we got going on here, so I'll move these out of the way, is now we have enough for a whole other set of tools. So you can give these away to your buddies um, if you want to take the time to do that. Uh, you know, or you make up yourself a whole nother list of tools, different, um, just as backups or spares. These here, I should have mentioned, this is all just mild steel. None of this was high carbon steel. Um, reason for that being is high carbon steel is just overpriced um, for what it is uh, in, in most instances for simple tooling like this. Um, you know, you, these things are going to take a beating. It's not really worth spending out the extra chunk of change on high carbon steel um, for as quickly as it takes to make these. It actually takes me longer to explain how to make these than it does for me to make these. It takes me about five minutes to make that, um, which when you get good at making a few of them in different shapes and sizes and styles, you'll, you'll be just as quick to be able to do that. As you notice, these are all pretty small tools. Um, I'm making them that way so this way they fit under my power hammers that I've created uh, for the beginner blacksmiths and the intermediates. Um, if you have a larger hammer, you know, you have a larger power hammer with much bigger, broader dies, you can invest with a lot heavier duty tooling, um, although it may not be needed. Uh, it just really depends on what size uh, stock you're going to work. Um, with my hardy hammer, uh, the max size is one inch stock diameter um, to be worked down by itself. So with top tooling, like I've got here, short top tooling, um, I would say that the actual diameter size would be more like five eighths or so, um, which just so happens is what I consider a minimum for doing tongs, a five eighths square material. Uh, but like I said, we'll go over that in the tong making video. Um, but uh, anyways, so that's essentially the process there. I hope you guys found this informative. Uh, if you have any questions, go ahead and just put them in the comment section below. I do read all my comments and I do try to take and get around to answering whatever questions I can. Um, you know, so put your questions down in the comments section uh, and I'll try to get back to you uh, at my as soon as I can to answer them for you guys. Uh, but anyways, hope, hope you all enjoyed this video um, and be on the lookout for the next one uh, in the series where I will actually be making a set of tongs. So thanks for watching. God bless you all and have a great day.